all together. We get by with a little help from our friends. I enjoy having friends that I can go to and say, hey, I, I need a project. Can, can you give me a hand? Hey class, what's up? Mr. G here. Today's project uh, is definitely not my idea. This is from one of my buddies, uh, Mrs. P. She works at another school that's kind of close to me. Uh, me and her have known each other for years, and she's assisting with today's project. Uh, where we're talking about DIY paper beading, paper jewelry. So for this project, she showed pictures on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, she's texting me some stuff of what she's what she's doing. And I was like, me and you got to check because I need help. This is like a perfect project for us to do uh, while, we're, while we're in the whole virtual thing. Now, one of the classes that Mrs. P teaches is jewelry design. And being in the virtual environment, I was like, this would be the perfect project to do while we're out of the classroom and we need some and we need something simple that we'd still do from home, but it gives a high elevated piece. So let's have Mrs. P teach us how we're gonna do some paper jewelry stuff. Okay, so um, as far as making the beads go, you're going to need a couple of things. Um, you can, if you're not confident with starting out your role, um, you can get something like um, a mandrel. Um, if you have like anything that's kind of like a small tube, um, I, I wouldn't use a pencil because that's way too big. But, um, you know, if you can find something like that lying around your house, you can use that to help get you started and you can use that to roll the beads. Um, personally, I don't really like using a mandrel. I like having more control over it with my fingers. Um, you know, some of my students really want to have something to roll it around because it can be difficult to grip, um, especially if you're making smaller beads. Um, so it's really just a personal preference. But if you're, um, if you don't have something to roll around it, um, and you know, for my students, I'll typically, I will have some uh, wooden dowels that they can use in the classroom. Um, but I just do it like this. And what I'll do to start it out is I'll kind of break the spine of the paper on the end in several spots so that I'll be able to roll it. Okay, so, um, and before I start with my decorated, my decorated paper, I pay attention to the color. You're gonna, most of the color you're gonna see is gonna be on the end, the last end that you roll up. So if I like the way that this design looks with my grays and just a little pop of orange, I would wanna start on the other end. If, however, I like this orange, uh, I would wanna start on the opposite end, right? Because the last thing you roll up is what's gonna show the most. Actually, I don't like this one as much. I like it with the darker shades, so I'm gonna start on this side. So I'm gonna just, to start it again, I'm gonna break the spine, or you can roll it around something if you want. And I just kind of go back and forth a little bit. I'll kind of go like this, and I'll grip it on either side. Now it's, it's tight, it's not going anywhere. And I'll put my finger underneath it to help brace it, and my thumb will periodically hold it down. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it forward. Oh, so like it's got three points of contact the whole time. Right, so it's either like this or like this. So it's kind of trading off as I roll it forward. And the reason I like to do it this way is because I have a lot of control over the strip. I can feel how tight it is. Um, I know because if you let this go mid-roll, it's going to unravel on you. Right now, this is tight. This is creating a solid form. Um, if you don't keep it tight as you're rolling, it's going to come loose. You're going to have gaps in between there, and it's just not going to be as good. Gotcha. Okay, so once I get to the end, uh, I'll make sure to, you know, not let it go yet. <laughs> and um, I'll use a little bit of Elmer's glue. I like to use Elmer's glue and not a glue stick just because it's a better hold. Of course, you don't want to go overboard. You just use a teeny tiny little bit. And then just continue your roll forward and just hold it for a couple of seconds and then it'll be, you know, secure. 
and you can just, if you want to, you can put that off to the side and continue rolling your, your other beads. Um, what you want to do after you're done making your beads is you want to coat them with Mod Podge. Mod Podge is what's going to give them that nice hard coating. Um, you can hear the way they sound in the container. They're nice and, uh, you know, they're, they're hard. They're protected. They're sturdy. They, they don't feel like just paper, right? And they have um, just a little bit of an additional visual interest because of the different shine on it, you know? So this is what you want to use. Maj Podge. Um, you can use, I don't really, I don't, honestly, I don't even have a color preference. I know they have an orange one and a pink one and a yellow one. I just went, it doesn't really matter. Um, I was, was going to ask you, which one do you prefer? No, I don't even care. Whatever's cheap and on sale? Yeah. Yeah, you know, whatever you feel like. Um, you know, there, I was also posed the question if you could use glue. You probably could use glue um, if you don't have anything else. You know, I don't, I wouldn't be against it. I mean, it's, I don't think it would ruin it or anything. It might make it a little clunkier um, and it might not be as. Um, smooth or shiny, but it will give you a protective layer on it and it won't just look like paper. So, um, you know, just up to you what you want to do with that. Um, and what you want to do to coat these with Maj Podge, um, actually I'll make a couple more forms and I'll show you how to do it because I like to do a few at once and there's a way that you can do it to where you get an even coating on them. Oh, perfect. Um, so some of the other uh, shapes you can do, if you, what I wanted to do for this, I had to figure out uh, what size I wanted my beads to be and I had to make them consistent. So to make them all consistent size so my bracelet looks even, um, I had to measure them. If you want to do a pattern, um, it's best to do that with the elegant outline bead. Um, that's what you get to really see the different colors in it. And if you want to see different colors in it, you need to plan to do that. Now, this one, you can see that we just rolled. I, I took from this paper. It's got a little bit of orange, a little bit of black. When I'm done, though, um, because of the, the form that we chose, we just did the simple cylinder. All we really see is the very end of the paper that we used. Um, you know, we don't really get to see much of the rest of it. We can see it a little bit on the sides, but that's about it, right? Um, for this one, it really showcases a lot of the bead, a lot of the color of the paper. And if you want to show a color difference, you have to change the color of the paper and you kind of go down the paper um, vertically for that. So I'll just do a rainbow real quick. Some more rainbow because I actually need a few more of these beads to finish this bracelet. This bracelet is not long enough for me yet. Um, so I figured out I had um, a prototype bead. I had already made one and I was like, okay, well, I like that size and I want to make more. So all I did was take, you know, my, um, my pencil and be like, okay, well, it's from the edge of the paper to about right here. That's about how big it is. So I just repeated that and you can take your ruler. I'm kind of eyeballing it right now. I kind of do that, but um, you can, you know, take your measurement all right, that's like three quarters of an inch, and I can, you know, mark it off again and again, and you can just go down your your whole paper like that. You can do this after it's colored, but I'm just kind of jumping forward to let you know, um, you know, you're going to consider um, what size you're going to make them. You want to make them pretty much all uniform, um, you know, to consider what you're making them for. Now, um, to make this, of course, it's going to be basically a rainbow strip. So I'm going to get my colors out. Um, I just used Crayola marker. Um, and like I said, a lot of the beads that I make, I use watercolor with because they're quick and easy and colorful. But if I want to make a specific pattern, I just use good old Crayola. Oh, here's another thing you can do with them. I was making this with my class. We're doing a sun catcher. Those are awesome. So I'm actually teaching them some wire wrapping with that. But we also incorporated some of our paper beads. 
I definitely want to do another video later with the wire wrap because that every time I see it, I'm like, I'm befuddled to no end. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I actually don't have orange, so I'm gonna kind of make orange with yellow and pink. That's okay, because that's what I'm doing. Red, orange, yellow, green. Blue. Okay. All right, so I wanted these to be a mixture of rainbow, and I wanted kind of like a sky blue around the rainbow. Um, so I started my paper uh, by doing blue. So again, I'm working long ways. Um, I did blue about up to right here. So not, I mean, you guys can't see my whole paper. That's really frustrating. I'm sorry. Okay. Ah. So I'm like right here on my paper. I'm not quite halfway up, but I'm a little, a little over a little over a quarter, kind of in between a quarter and a third. That's totally irrelevant, though. I mean, you can put your stripes wherever you want to. This is just for to match the pattern I already have going. All right, so I'm basically just going to color the paper. I'm not going to worry about making it perfect. I'm not going to worry about the different scribble textures I can have. I mean, I really just want to make sure I'm coloring it. Because, again, this is not like I'm drawing something or painting something um, that you're going to look at as a two-dimensional image. You're going to roll this up. All I need is the color on here. Draw my strip 
but I'm going to need to make a point. So the reason I drew my line first is because I need to know where the middle of this is. And I can just kind of draw a dot right there. And so I'm going to draw my, my line with my ruler. You definitely want to use a ruler if you're not just doing a basic cone. If you're not just doing a basic cylinder. Which is what we did the first one. And then just go from that middle dot down to either side of
so yeah, cool. You I was, see. That, that looks so good. Well, so now you can see how the pattern worked out. It's like some weird Wonka like shrink ray thing where you have this this big sheet of color and it like wee little bitty thing that, that comes out. Yeah. So this is um what we're left with. Awesome. And um you can see the difference between the one that has the Maj Podge coating and the one that doesn't. Right. That, I mean, it's night and day is how it looks with that with that um, shine to it. Yeah. So, um, and what I was saying about uh, putting the Mod Podge on them, I, if you only have a paper, paper clip at home, you can use a paper clip pretty easily um, and just kind of, you know, straighten it out and just put your put your beads on there and um, if you have like a uh, you have a cup or something you know you can just rest them on that while they dry and just do it like that because yeah, otherwise I mean you can just put whoop, and you gotta be careful because you can new shape slide. yeah slide it sure eases around that's the other thing why the Mod Podge is important because if you don't use your Mod Podge I mean they can get bent out of shape you know mm -hmm. they're not secure yet the right. only the end is glued down we didn't glue the whole whole thing and I guess you know we probably could have used a glue stick and done the whole paper as we rolled but that would just be a sticky mess and glue sticks dry pretty fast anyways yeah if you're taking your time rolling them it's just it's more trouble than it's worth for a little effect so. Yeah, I, got, I got a friend who's out in Santa Fe and like it's still like the, it's not out, it's not hot out there as it was but like if you do this as like a late semester assignment in the spring it's 100 degrees outside that, that humidity there's no humidity it's going to just evaporate and it's just going to dry out super fast and that's not good yeah okay so this is I know it looks blue but it's actually just water um, one important thing to note is, um, you know, your Mod Podge is wet, so you're getting your paper bead wet. So since I used washable markers, um, it's going to bleed a little bit with the color. That's okay because they're kind of funky and organic anyways. Um, but if you go a little overboard in some areas, um, you could get a little bit of discoloration. I don't know if you can see that on that one right there. Yeah. Kind of. But I, I think it works still because it, even with that little bit of fade in the blue, yeah, that's totally doable. Yeah, but also you see where it got stuck to the paper. Yep. It was drying on. So, like, you can just, you know, coat it and leave it on, laying on something and take it off later, but you'll have little flat spots. Um, if you put on too much uh, Mod Podge, you might have a little discoloration. So, really, this is the the best way to do it as far as your final product goes. Yes. So I'll just kind of dip this in the water and I'm being a rebel. I'm not even putting this on anything. I'm just going to kind of put a dab directly on my brush. We're hardcore here. Just, just coat it. Yeah, I'm just going to. So, um, and you really don't need a whole lot. No. I'm just putting a little bit on there. Like a large um, pea size. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then you basically just um, paint it. And it's going to, if you've never used Mod Podge before, it's going to look like you're covering up the color, and it's going to look kind of like you're just coating it with glue. And heck, maybe you are just coating it with glue, because that's all you have at home. But um, when it dries, it's going to be clear. Um, now, I do recommend putting two layers on, and to do two layers, you need to wait till this is dry. Um, you know, you can probably come back in like 10 or 15 minutes um, if you're impatient, and by then it should probably be okay. Um, but typically by the time I'm done rolling my next set of beads, this is ready for the second coat, and then I do the first coat on the next batch. So you can kind of make like a production line that way. So. Love it. And of course, I'm rinsing my brush out so I don't ruin my brush with Mod Podge. 
That's pretty much it. And um, this, I don't think I have a video for on YouTube, but I show this to them, and um, it's basically really easy. All you do is... Oh, I love have, the whiteboard. Yeah, you have two... Um, actually, I'll use two different colors, so they... You can see them. Okay, so... You got the two strips, and you basically just cross them over each other over and over again. So, like, cross it over, and when you cross it over, that's when you put your bead on. Oh, okay. And then um, when you then you take the other strand. And you also put it through the bead, and it comes out the other way. Now, are they using a needle to, to thread all no. this? No, this is just, I mean, when I rolled this, I made sure that the hole was big enough to fit a standard string through. Got it. Yeah. So that's basically how you do that pattern. And then I would put my... Um, you know, I would put my two small beads on, and then I would cross them across my next big bead. So you just kind of go back and forth gotcha. with this cross pattern with two strands. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go do a little deep dive into the sketchbook elements on that, just because that's that's really, if you don't draw that out first, you're going to screw it up. <laughs> that's That's what I see. Awesome class, hope you guys got something excellent out of that. Let me go ahead and preface that this is like a dry run version of this video. I'm doing another series on this. We had a, me and her chatter for like two hours. So I've got a series of videos that are gonna be coming out. So stay tuned for those things. All right, so before we go for the day, let's go ahead and take care of the homework, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Don't forget to get the message out there to all the other students uh, so we can keep the learning activities going. Oh yeah, and don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise those hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.